The CFA is one of the top qualifications in finance, but does it really help you get into investment banking? Let's find out. If you're new here, I'm Harris and I'm a very lucky man. I'm lucky because I work in investment banking and hold a CFA charter, so I've had some great opportunities in life. But it wasn't always like this, so I created this channel to help people ace their studies, excel in their career, and achieve financial success. Especially if, like me, you didn't have access to this information growing up. Okay, let's get into the video. Does the CFA help you get into investment banking? The short answer is no, but it's more complicated than that. Here's a few questions for you to consider. Number one, which stage of your career are you at? Number two, which part of investment banking do you want to work in? Number three, what experience do you have? Number four, how good is your financial knowledge? And number five, how many people do you know? Now, let's step through each of these. Okay, let's start with career. The truth is, most people get into investment banking post uni as an analyst, at which point your degree, network and interviewing skills get you in, not the CFA. That's because you're very unlikely to have the CFA at that point, given it requires three to five years to complete and a minimum of three years of experience in a relevant domain. Therefore, it tends to be something you do alongside work to enhance work rather than to get into work. Now, obviously later in your career, it can be used to facilitate moves and I'll touch on that later. But if you're a graduate, I would ignore the CFA. This is not your best route in. Your best route is networking and persistence and I'll touch on that later. If you're already working and you're trying to move into investment banking, the typical way that people do this is through an MBA, but this is very expensive. So the CFA can be a reasonable alternative to this, although I don't think it's necessarily the one in terms of breaking into front office roles. I'll touch on that more in a second, but generally speaking, to conclude this first point, I think the CFA is better for enhancing your work and improving your skills than breaking into front office IB roles. Right, number two is which part of investment banking are you trying to get into? And this one is arguably more important than the first point. Now, the first thing to understand is that investment banks and investment banking are not the same thing. Investment banks have a variety of roles, including front, middle, and back office roles. Now, front office roles are client facing and revenue generating. So these are your M&A and your capital market teams within investment banking division. And then you have sales and trading and investment research. These are what most people consider investment banking. Middle and back office roles are more support roles. And this includes risk, compliance, operations, data, technology, and so on. There's nothing wrong with these roles, but these are not investment banking. So when people say they want to break into investment banking, they mean front office roles. For the investment banking division, i.e. M&A and capital markets, as well as sales and trading, the CFA is probably not what's going to get you into those roles, but it may be a prerequisite, i.e. a requirement for investment research. I'll come back to M&A, capital markets and sales and trading in a second. But for investment research, you probably do need the CFA given the type of work you'll be doing. So if you're trying to engineer a move into investment research, then the CFA may well help you get it. Now, where the CFA can be more useful is if you're currently in a non-finance role and you're trying to break into investment banking, it can help you engineer a move into middle or back office roles at an investment bank, after which you can work your way to the front office. People do do this and here, the CFA is a lot more effective. So to summarize, if you're trying to get into investment research, the CFA is useful. And if you're trying to get into an investment bank via the middle or back office and move your way to front office, you can do that with the CFA too. But generally sales and trading and investment banking division, i.e. M&A and capital markets, tend to look more for experience. And that's what I'm gonna to touch on next. Now, the third thing to consider is your experience. Now the CFA is amazing in terms of helping you establish that breadth of financial knowledge but it does not match practical experience. And front office investment banking, particularly sales and trading and the investment banking division, tend to want to see self-starters and risk takers, i.e. people with genuine skin in the game. Now, the concept of skin in the game was popularized by Nassim Taleb in his book, Skin in the Game. And in the context of finance, it means having real life experience and exposure to the risk and rewards of the finance industry. So for example, if you want to be a trader, make some trades with your own money and then show the evidence of those trades. Even if you lose money, it shows you've taken real risk and learnt through the process of implementing rather than studying it in a book. For the investment banking division, having a sales role or a side venture or something that demonstrates your sales and negotiation skills is arguably a better combination than having the CFA. Now this applies more to employees than graduates, but generally speaking, 
real world and practical experience beats theory. Now, if you still want to do the CFA once you land the role, most of these institutions will allow you to study alongside work and they'll fund it, at which point you can do it. But if you're trying to get into the role, real world experience and practical experience tends to be more effective. Okay, the fourth thing to consider is your network. The truth is the CFA does not help you build a network, at least whilst you're doing it. And to get into finance or to get into investment banking, relationships are important. The old adage of it's not what you know, it's who you know still applies to some extent. Now that doesn't mean that it's rigged. It just means that you need some level of advocacy, i.e. you have a good reputation and people speak highly of you, especially because in investment banking, you spend a lot of time with these people. So you need to be a very likable person and you need to be good at building a network. So generally focus on being valuable and likable. And that doesn't mean a people pleaser. It just means a genuine, authentic and hardworking person that people have time for. And the truth is connections open doors and connections take time to build. And the CFA sucks up a lot of time. So there's an opportunity cost there. When you do the CFA alongside work, you're spending all your additional hours studying. And so that means it's much harder to socialize and build a network, which can be the thing that opens the door to investment banking for you. I'm not saying socializing is more important than the CFA. It's just a big consideration. From my perspective, it is one of my regrets. I spent a lot of time studying over the last three to four years, which meant that I didn't spend as much time building my network, which is something I regret a little bit. The final thing to consider is your financial knowledge. Now you might have expected this earlier on the list, but the truth is there's no textbook for finance per se. It's a multifaceted, multivariable thing and you do most of the learning on the job. But a baseline level of financial knowledge is important. So for example, basic accounting, understanding of asset classes such as equity, debt, and real estate, understanding basic economics and knowing what's going on in the market. All of these things are important for interviewing and for networking so that you can speak the language. But the truth is you can get all of this from CFA level one or from self-study. As you get to level two and three, it becomes a lot more specialized and a lot more portfolio management focused which becomes less applicable to banking. Now, of course, the CFA does demonstrate initiative, proactivity, a commitment to upskilling, and generally improves your confidence, all of which helps you stand out. But a lot of the value and the things that you need to get into investment banking, you can get from CFA level one. So you have to ask yourself whether it's worth committing to the entire charter. And arguably the time that you save could be spent on building practical skills and a network, both of which are very important as well. In summary, I don't think that the CFA is required to get into investment banking. And I don't think it's a huge competitive advantage. I think you get most of what you need from CFA level one, but obviously if you want to work in investment research, it's almost a prerequisite. And if you are struggling to break into finance in general, it's a good way to get into back office or middle office roles and work your way to the front office. But otherwise, you may want to place higher weight on practical experience, as well as building a network, both of which take time. And time is something that the CFA sucks up. So it's a big consideration. Now, having said all of that, having done it, I'm very grateful to have it. I learned loads and it has massively boosted my confidence. It is a great signal on your CV and the discipline and consistency I've built through the process is something I carry with me that benefits me. But I am a bit regretful of not having built the network and that's something that I'm trying to catch up on now, which takes time. So if you're debating doing the CFA and you're considering working in investment banking, drop a comment below. It'd be good to hear your thoughts. I have other videos on CFA specific preparation if you do choose to go ahead so check them out otherwise thanks and see you in the next video